Hi everyone, Sandra Duran Wilson here, and welcome to Mixed Media Soul Sparks. This time I'm going to take you down a very interesting way to move your paint. And this is also a great thing to use some leftover paints for. The only thing you really need is a piece of plastic. I recommend to use a, a heavier plastic rather than a really thin plastic. I've got a few different weights that I've, I've used, but if you use a really thin plastic, it runs the risk of tearing when you remove the plastic. This will make a lot more sense as, as we go along. So you might think, well, why am I going to paint on plastic? There's a couple of reasons. And sometimes you get these very interesting um, movements of paint on the plastic that you can't get any other way. And I'm going to show you how to do it and then I'm going to share with you a few different ways to use it. And I hope you get as excited about it as I do. One of the first things you have to realize is that which side is the paint on? Might be obvious when you're painting it, but once it's dry, you look at this and you're like, hmm, it kind of looks the same on either side. I really can't tell, and I just did this one. So here's a trick to get around that, is you put a little piece of tape on the side where you're going to be painting. So let me just move this out of the way, and I'll show you what I'm going to do. And I'm going to use a couple different colors. I can add some gloss medium or not. It's up to you. Depending on how much water you have on your brush, how thick your paint is. This is a fluid paint, although it's a little thick. It's kind of dried out over the years. And I can add some water to it if I need to. You might want to think about your colors, how they're going to look when you, when you mix them. You can use a brush as well. Let's get the brush in here because it's got some water on it. This is what I'm looking for it to do, is to kind of bead up. The more water you have on the surface, the more it's going to bead up. And sometimes it just takes it a little while before you see that happen. So don't put so much water on that it's never going to dry. I say that, I'm going to add a little more water, and I'm going to add some Payne's Gray. So, so far I've put a, a cobalt turquoise and white, and now I'm adding just a few drops of Payne's Gray. You see how much thinner that Payne's Gray was. Now, just like when I made the, the birch trees or the aspen trees, I'm using a separate piece of plastic to blot off some of the paint. Again, I'm going to put the little piece of tape on here, so I'm going to know that that is the side where my paint is. And I just gently tap it down, pick it up, and I can get some very interesting movement within that paint. I like that. I may just, you know me, I can't resist playing with things. It's just like in printmaking. Sometimes the uh, second print, or what we call the ghost print, is more interesting than the first one. So this is what I'm looking at. And you're like, what is she talking about? That's just some paint on plastic. What are you going to do with it? Well, I'll show you what I'm going to do with it. First, I'll just clean my knife off here. If I wanted to spray a little alcohol on here, I get these openings. That's the resist technique. I could let this dry and perhaps add a little gloss medium and put another color on top. Let me demonstrate that to you. I'll get this out of the way. We'll revisit those pieces later. Here's a piece that 
I had said, oh, I'm not sure which side the paint is on. So here's a way to tell just how the alcohol creates a resist. If I put the alcohol on here, pick a little spot out of the way. And if the paint rubs off like that, this is the side where the paint is. Putting the piece of tape on is going to prevent you from adding second layer of paint to the wrong side. I know, I've done it, so <laughs> just warning you. Now here's another thing you want to remember. Okay, this is going to dry clear. I've got this bit of paint on my brush, so I'm just going to do this. This is going on top of that other color. However, I'm going to be transferring this paint off of the plastic onto a painting. So the side I'm going to be looking at is actually this side. Now, what if you say, but I like this side better. I'll show you a trick to deal with that. But let me just get this out of the way. You have to have lots of room to make these. Here's another one that I've worked with different viscosities of paint. And I can tell pretty much because this paint is thicker that it's on this side. Now let's say I liked this side, the way this look. Let's just imagine I'm going to transfer it onto another panel. So I'm looking at this, how might it look onto a canvas? And I've got some other color behind on the canvas. But let's say I like this side more than this side. How do I get that off? Well, you can do a paint skin, and what you have to do, it involves another step, and you would take gel. I'm using regular gel gloss, and just like how we made our gold leaf skin, you're gonna do a similar thing. You're just gonna apply, this is the paint side, remember, and I'm applying a thick enough layer of this gel so that when it dries, I can actually peel this layer of paint off. Then it would be like a skin, and I can put it onto the, the painting, and then that's going to be face up. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, here's another reason why I like to do this. So I've got this background piece. And I'm going to attach this. Now the paint is on this side. So I'm looking at it this way. Here I can say, well, how do I want my composition? So I like it kind of that way. And I'm just going to put the gel on here. And the paint is really, it's only going to stick where there is gel. For this particular piece, I want the whole thing covered in this paint. So I'm going to cover the entire surface with an adequate layer of gel. Now if you have a different kind of gel, or even if you have a matte gel, that's fine too. Get rid of the extra. So now I'm going to put this down. I'm going to press it down, get rid of any air bubbles. You can just use your hand or a roller. Now here's the thing. It's going to take it quite a while to dry. But when it does, and I'll show you an after picture. We're not going to stand around and wait hours for it to dry. We have places we got to go, but I want to peel the plastic off and that paint will stick onto that surface and I'll show you a photograph of what it looks like. But there's one more way that you can actually get the paint onto the surface to stick. And I'm going to show you one I've already done. And this is what it looks like. See, it's almost getting like this wax look to it because I did use um, semi-gloss gel when I put that on there. So here's a benefit. 
it's already got some, some gel on it. And let's say I want to just add paint to this area. You can cut a piece of your plastic to go just where you want it to go. You don't have to cover the whole thing. Make sure I have it on the right side. Let's test it again. That's the thing, you put the, you put the, the tape on and then you, you cut up the piece. You might have cut your plastic off. I think I had it planned, so I think it was right there. I'll test it. Yep, paint's coming off. So I'm going to put it there. Let me turn my iron on. You know we only use the iron for the studio. Now I'm working on a silicone mat. Very important, you want to get a piece of cooking parchment paper. And you want to put the cooking parchment paper on top of your plastic. Otherwise, the plastic will melt onto your iron. Now I just turned this on, so it's probably not hot enough yet. up pretty quick. The only thing I want to do is I don't want to melt the plastic, I just want to melt the paint. So let's see if that, give it a second to cool. So it's not coming off there, but it's starting to come off here. So let me give it a little more heat, especially over on this side. And I'm pressing down to getting a little pressure. Now let it cool a moment. So at the end of this video, I'm going to include a photo of a painting that I did. It's a four foot by four foot painting that I did this over a large portion of the painting. And it's starting to come off over here. Get a little more, a little more heat, a little more pressure. see the plastic's kind of wrinkling up, so I think that did it. The other part is, is you really want to let it cool a moment before you try and peel it off. So here I can see it's starting to come off in certain spots since I'm not waiting for it to cool. But look at what's happening. This is very interesting in how I can get this other layer on top and you think, well, couldn't I do that directly onto the painting? You, you can in some ways, but you often don't get this same kind of effect. Let me give it one more. Here we go. This looks good. So this is the effect we're going for, this area right here, how that's going to go. And I can stop and come back and heat this more, which I'll do off camera and show you what this looks like when it's finished. It's really important to... Heat it enough, but then let it cool enough. And since this is on a board, you know, it's going to take it a while. So let's say you wanted to do the same thing on a stretched canvas. Just put a piece of wood or a book underneath your stretched canvas so that you have pressure you can put down onto it. And I'll let you uh, see the other one when the uh, gel is finally dry and I pull that off. And there's some kind of cool things you can do to add shadows to that as well. So thanks for joining me. Uh, check out my website and all the other videos. And thanks for watching.
join the Creative Awakening community on Facebook, where you'll be able to post your art, connect with other creatives around the world, and ask questions. Use the hashtag Mixed Media Soul Sparks when posting your work on social media. Thanks for joining me.